everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of the Witty Banter Book Club podcast. As you can tell, <laughs> we are in person in today. In the flesh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you needed to do that for the visuals so yeah. you can see that I'm real. I'm not pretending that she's next to me. She's actually here. She's not that good at Photoshop yet. Yet. So, <laughs> uh, if I'm moving around a lot, which is probably going to be the case, it is because... If you can't tell, we are filming on a different camera right now because we're obviously together. We also have a singular mic because I cannot figure out how to get the other mic to work. So I'm moving around a lot. So if you hear moving around in the audio version or if you're watching and you see me moving around a lot, mind your business. Yeah, that's so. right. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, this week, Courtney and I, we read The Wedding she Crasher oh. by Mia Sosa. Yes. And uh, Courtney, why don't you tell us about this book? What is it about? Um, I will tell us about this book. But first, I want to point out that Maddie and I are actually going to a wedding today. So yes. this book is kind of funny. But this book is about Dean. He is, I believe he's in his 30s, uh, and he is a law firm associate. He's trying to move up into the position of partner, and he's kind of had his life set up and all these neat little categories with goals. And uh, then we also have Solange. She is Brazilian. She's the female main character. She teaches uh, people to help try and get them their GEDs. Uh, and she is also very wary of love. She has very high standards and she refuses to lower them or anybody. Now these two meet on Dean's wedding day and Solange overhears some things she probably shouldn't. She interrupts the wedding uh, and then they decide to try and help Dean get a job promotion and to kind of smooth over some familiar relationships in Solange's family that they're going to a fake date and we all know how that goes. Um, so this book is really just about them um, kind of coming to terms with some of the things that are changing in their lives. Obviously Dean's wedding kind of gets thrown off kilter so that's something he has to deal with um, and also coming together through this fake dating relationship getting to know each other's families and friends. I thought it was really beautiful and cute so yeah. Yeah, so, like she said, it is, it, the trope in this is fake dating, um, that's pretty much the only trope, both of them yeah. are pretty happy people, you know, there's no grumpy sunshine, mm -hmm. um, there's really not a whole lot of, like, conflict between the two, and it's mostly just, like, a, a romance book, where it's just fake dating, and that's, that's the whole thing. So it was a different, it was a little refreshing from what we've been reading, because every, we've been reading lots of books recently that are kind of all over the place. Yeah. They have, like, all these different tropes, so it was nice to have just, like, one trope. I agree, and, like, I'm, I, they use the fake dating scenario in, like, a couple different instances throughout the book, so it's still very, like, fresh. It's not tired in that regard. Um, maybe, like, a little bit of friends to lovers definitely not enemies to lovers which i love but the author did a really good job this is also one of the first books we've read besides um the twisted. twisted series that has an author that is not caucasian so that's also really good we're trying to get more inclusive with some of the authors that we're having and the author in this book did a really good job of inclusion with her characters as well yeah, yeah i really like i the book overall i enjoyed the book in the terms there's certain parts of this book that i did not enjoy <laughs> and we'll yeah, get into we'll that get when we that. talk to this talk about the spoilers <laughs> but there are i mean for the most part i really liked this book i really mm -hmm. liked the writing of it i thought that was my dad for a second it's just a guy <laughs> on a bike I'm like, wait my dad's golfing today um so we're gonna get into our ratings for this if you also notice this episode is probably gonna be a little bit shorter than our usual episodes that is because we are on a little bit of a time crunch today, and we wanted to get this done. Yes. So, we're going to start with our ratings. So, we have four main pillars that we have. Oh, actually, we didn't talk about if we'd recommend this book yet. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Reverse. We'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to talk about if we recommend this book. So, this is for recommendations for book readers in general. So, would you recommend this book to a book reader? Yeah, absolutely. I would. It was a relatively short read. I did it in a couple of days. I actually just finished it a couple hours hours ago because I was traveling and stuff um out here to Phoenix for this wedding but 
I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cute, very wholesome. Uh, it's everything you look for in a romance novel, and it's also not like 600 pages like some of the other books Maddie and I have read, so I really liked it. I would recommend it. I also would recommend it. I don't think it'd be the first book I would recommend. No. It's because... I, we'll get into this, but I have, I'm like very neutral about this book. Like I don't have any strong feelings of disdain or any strong okay. feelings of love towards it. It was just like, I enjoyed my time reading this book. Am I probably going to read it again? Probably not, but it, it was enjoyable while I read it. The time that I read it. I think it like checks off all the boxes for like what a romance book should have. Um, that doesn't mean it's the most well done ever, but like everything I want in a romance novel was in here. So I liked that aspect. Yeah. So um, I would recommend it to a reader, but like I said, I wouldn't read it, read again. it again. Yeah. Um, so the next the next uh, part is would I recommend this to my 16 year old sister? She's in her room, by the way. Yeah. We're at her house right yeah. now. Uh, no, I would not <laughs> recommend this. She, If you recall and you watched last week's episode, I said at the end of that that my sister might be joining us. Um, luckily she didn't buy the book because halfway through it, I was like, actually, Sienna, you cannot read this book. No. Um, you are forbidden actually from reading it. So, uh, yeah, I would not recommend this to my 17 or 18 year old sister. She, my 18 year old sister has recently delved into the world of romance reading, but I can't in good conscience, you know, recommend this to my baby sister. It just feels wrong. There is some, like, there's some smut. There's going to be a lot of that in most of the books we read, but some of them are more See, YA. The like, thing about the smut in this book is that the actual smut between the characters, I didn't think was that wasn't, intense. Like, yeah. It wasn't super descriptive like some of the other books we've read. Um, however, there is one scene in particular in this where it felt more descriptive than the actual scene between yeah. the uh, like the main characters. So because of that, I was that was the scene, and I was like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I also think that in particular is just something that like not everybody is comfortable with, but definitely not people who are under the age of majority. Yeah. So. Ye Sorry. Sorry, yeah. teens. No, for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Four pillars. <laughs> um, so we have four pillars that we like to rate our books on, and then we give it an average score, and it's not an average of, like, our tallied up our averages of it. It's how we felt averagely about the book. <laughs> so um, the first pillar is the witty banter in this book. Now, what did you think of the witty banter in this book? You know what? I really liked it. I thought there was a lot of good witty banter. I... I'm kind of like a witty banter purist, though, so I only gave it a four, because I always think it could be better. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a couple books that I've read where I think it could be a five, but the chemistry between Solange and Dean is really good. She's kind of snarky. He handles it well and kind of, like, dishes it out back, so I really liked their chemistry, uh, and I do think a lot of their interactions were very witty. I agree. Yeah. I didn't think it was... I mean, I laughed a lot. Yeah. between some of their interactions and so like I enjoyed reading it and I thought that they had nice chemistry and I thought that they got along really well um the thing is is that like oh, this is I'm gonna be talking about this book forever things we never got over was so good that so like good if it doesn't it didn't meet up it didn't meet up with that level of witty banter but this witty banter was still good so I also gave it a four okay same page perfect yeah so the next category is the character development. Now, I think that the thing is, is that Solange, is that how you mm -hmm. say her name? I think so. I had to look up how to say it and I've already forgotten. Solange. Yeah, in my head, I was, <laughs> in my head, I was saying it really, well, I was saying it like Beyonce's sister. Like, that's what I was thinking. Solange, no. <laughs> yes. Isn't she, is she part of Destiny's Child? I don't know. Probably. I'm pretty sure Maybe. she, I think, I think that she was part of Destiny's Child. Don't judge us for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, okay, to be fair, that was a little bit before we're tired. Just a little time. bit. We're, Beyonce like, was we're 24. Yeah, so. Beyonce was doing her solo thing by the time we were old enough to Beyonce. listen to music. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I think that she had some good character development. However, her character development wasn't necessary, like... I think that the person of the most character development was Dean, oh, who for sure. came to terms with, like, you can actually love somebody. It's fine. <laughs> like, And she just kind of, she was very consistent throughout it. She threw a little curveballs at me every now and then with her 
experiences. Um, but overall, I feel like Dean's character development was really good. Yeah. I think that it made sense in the way that it went, went about. Um, and I think that it was good. I don't know. S- Solange Knowles. Um, <laughs> that's not her name. I'm, I don't know what her last name is. I for, I for Pereira. Per, Pereira. Per, Perea. Perea, I think. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Just wait until we get into like the casting because I'm going to absolutely butcher that. I didn't do that. casting this time. That's okay. I didn't do it last time. so. I have an idea in my head okay. though. I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your n- numerical rating? Okay, my numerical rating of the character about four. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't feel like she changed a lot, which is fine because she didn't really need to, but I felt like yeah. Dean's was so good that it was... It wasn't so good, but it was good enough where I was like, this is a four. I also gave it a four. Solange is already a very independent woman. She works really hard. She has a great relationship with her mother and her aunts who raised her with her cousins. Um, And so, like, really the only thing she has to get over is her really high standards um, and, like, accepting that someone can love her. And it might go wrong, too. Mm -hmm. Um, But Dean's character development was... I think really excellent he you know had been very career focused for his entire life and everything just kind of felt like a checklist that he was working his way towards to that ultimate goal of becoming partner at his law firm uh and it's just kind of a journey of him discovering like what really matters in life which is your connections with people and having like someone to come home to so I thought it was pretty good he also had some character development like with his job he didn't work at the best place was kind of a toxic work environment and he came to realize that like he had a lot more value than Mm -hmm. that and he did so i think he had an excellent character development for okay um our next category is the smut in this book so i gave it i didn't think it was that good Mm -hmm. so like i would say like a two okay like a I mean, I didn't. Are we talking about like quality or like con- like spiciness? Both. Okay. I think I actually gave it a three in my Instagram post. Okay. But it was it wasn't super like graphic or anything like that. There's just some scenes that are a little bit more than others. Um, that scene is like a five in terms of like quality of it, whereas the other ones felt more like a two. Yeah. So like a three, I think, is fair. Okay. I think I would. I'd probably also give it a three. If we're talking in terms of, like, intensity, This the scenes are not that intense. I've read some Katie Roberts books, and those are, like, fives on, like, the scary spicy scale. <laughs> um, those don't quite reach that level. There are some proclivities, I would say, that are unique in this book, which I think lowered the score a little bit for me, just because... And it's fine. Not every romance you book you read is gonna have like vanilla smut. That's right. Fine. No, that's but, not, like it's, it's it is it's the fact that that scene is so just like random. It came out of nowhere. It came out nowhere. of nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> um. So yeah, I would yeah. give it a three. It could have been better. I you know there's some that I read in books where like when I'm reading it, I'm like covering my mouth, like shrieking, like ah, oh my god. That didn't really happen with this one, thank goodness, because I was reading those parts on an airplane. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm thinking about you just on an airplane and then just like start screaming. Literally, I like when I'm on planes and I'm reading books like this, I have to like tilt it so the people next to me don't like look at the page. <laughs> yeah, it's like the most raunchiest scene that you could possibly read, and you're just it like eating is. your peanuts from the Except for I can't eat peanuts. Well, like, like, the pretzels, pretzels whatever. Yeah. And there's always, like, an old man next to me, too. So I'm like, oh, God. He sees the word, like, sex, and he's like, <laughs> whore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, so. <laughs> three. <laughs> um, overall. No, last category. Yeah. Our last category is realism. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was going to say, overall, my rating was also a three okay i thought well i thought she was jumping ahead to the overall rating for the book no no no. overall i think that it was a three yeah for this month for sure um our last pillar which is the last important pillar is the realism i gave it i don't know a three again i guess it was the ending is not super realistic um which kind of like it's very uh what is the word it's like a cliche, mm. you know? Yeah. 
so I don't know. I feel like my whole perception has been thrown off by books like Twisted Love and like <laughs> for like realism and stuff. I thought this book was relatively realistic, right? So like some of the struggles that Solange was facing, I think were pretty realistic. A lot of the struggles that Dean was facing were a little realistic. Fake dating, in my opinion, is never super realistic. Um, so <laughs> my jeans are cutting into my oh. body. <laughs> So that was kind of a, a negative for me. And I do think the ending was very unrealistic. But, like, I don't know. I think the familial connections and stuff like that and um, some of the problems they encounter just, like, as a developing couple are realistic. But I'd probably err on the side of giving it a three just because, I don't know. The fake dating is just never realistic in my mind. Do you know what's so funny? I was Except on- for... <sighs> Things we never got over has fake dating, but in this case, it was like more extreme. Well, you also, like it was for his we job. We also said that it wasn't realistic in that book too. That's so. Fair. That was I think that's I the, just love that book it, so I, much. You gave that book a four in realism, I think, because you okay. said that exact thing. Okay, so I'm not contradicting myself. No. Um, I saw this post though on Instagram, and it was for things we never got over, and it was somebody saying, "But fake dating." Da- but fake dating is never really real. And somebody commented on it. I actually met my husband through fake dating. Wow. I was like, I need to know the story about this immediately. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So overall. our overall rating of this book, like I said, I didn't have like super strong feelings towards it. I didn't have like a strong love for it or mm-hmm. a strong hate for it. I enjoyed my time reading this book, um, so I'm going to give it, like, a, f- a three and a half, four. Okay. So. A low four. Yeah, like a low four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I will also give it a low four. Uh, I, again, like I said, it checks all the boxes, but it's nothing to, like, write home about, I guess. Some of the things in there made me a little uncomfortable. Not that there was necessarily a need for, like, a trigger warning or anything. No. It's just, like, there's absolutely no buildup. And then it's like, hey, this is, like, a really weird scene. Yeah. In your face. Uh, So, a low four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A generous four. Yes. We are being generous with the four. Yes. Um, But there is another book by this author. Um, It is called The Worst Best Man. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not a prequel, but it happens to her cousin before. So I would read it. I would read it. I would read it. Maybe if we have another wedding to go to, we can read that one. Yeah. Um, We're not going to prioritize it for the podcast this year. But considering this book, I would say I'd probably recommend reading some of her stuff in general. Yeah. I would, I would also. The book itself is really great. However, I do have something to say about the quality of this book. I don't know how your book was, but there was, like, blood on some of my pages. Oh. I don't know if it's actually blood or if it just kind of looks like blood, but, like, look. Oh. That, it might just be... Sometimes when they're making paper, like, stuff gets into the paper. That might be what it is. Yeah. In terms of quality, like, I don't know. I traveled with this book yesterday, but other than that, it's just been sitting on my shelf and the edges are a little torn up. So I wouldn't say it's like super high production quality and it is $17. So I would hope yeah. for like just also, a little bit better. Can you see the binding is coming apart up there? Yeah. And like, I, I don't know the, I mean, granted I read, I don't like rip my books open either when I read them. Like yeah. I try and keep them from getting too um, spread out. But as you can see, the cover is kind of bent. Yeah. So, But this is obviously not a criticism of the author who doesn't no. have any control over that. It's the book. It, it's the literal book itself. Yeah. Production quality. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we are going to transition into the spoiler part yes. of our review. So if you have not read this book and you would like to, um, please come back around later and follow up with this part. If you don't want to read the book, but you'd like to hear our discussion about it, go ahead and stay on with us. Yes. Because we're going to get into the nitty gritty of this. Oh, yeah. And specifically, the scene. So since Valentine's Day is coming up, Courtney and I have gotten each other Valentine's Day gifts. We thought it would be kind of like a fun little thing to do in person. Uh, And since we're together, 
That's why not do. Yeah. to be honest though if it was saint patrick's day i'd still do the same yeah. thing i'd still get her a saint patrick's day gift i might do that for when you come out in march i will also do that then okay okay so courtney's first gift to me i'm <laughs> <laughs> hey feet people click off yeah i don't want you looking at my feet she got me a pair of socks yes they are candy hearts and they match her a little well they don't yeah. exactly match her shirt but but they match the candy hearts that's thing. what it reminded me of yeah she was like first of all super cute we were texting you about this because the store that has this has a bunch of other cute stuff. Um, and It's a bunch of love hearts. I don't know if you can see it from all the way over there, but it's got a bunch of love hearts and they have different romance novel tropes, tropes all over them. Um, but anyways, the socks reminded me of that, so I grabbed those for her. Yeah. So, okay, here's your first, here's your first present. Okay. <laughs> they're so cute. Okay, they're a little heart uh mag <laughs> you're gonna laugh so hard magnet <laughs> bookmarks uh, and with that i'll give maddie my second gift <laughs> it's also heart magnetic bookmarks oh my god it's so perfect <laughs> um, <laughs> happy valentine's day everybody i feel like these these ones are more like valentine's e because yeah. they're, they're the candy heart ones but these are always good though to have i know Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so your second gift. We were talking about these at Barnes and Noble, okay. and they didn't have them at Barnes and Noble, so I ordered them off <gasps> Amazon. And they are Bible, Bible highlighters, highlighters, but they're not for the Bible. No, they're for <laughs> law textbooks, and also smut. So well, I got them with the, the idea Bible of, <laughs> of law textbooks because law textbooks are made of that same paper that Bibles oh, it's are, so thin. where it's so thin and like you could just bleed right through so. so cute thank you you're welcome the little pastelies they're actually a lot darker than they look too okay so i got a pair or a pack also mm-hmm. so i also got myself a pack of those magnets yeah i saw <laughs> that book you have <laughs> I the magnets know. i because i was showing it to her and i was like shit <laughs> okay are you ready yes and then your last one i got Ooh, you some fancy some tabbies tabs. for my book yes oh thank there's you like a so hundred or one thousand two hundred of them they're all very so, beautiful colors. I hope, I hope you enjoy those. Perfect. Now I can um, color code it. Okay, so this is kind <laughs> of a gift. I bought this uh, <laughs> blush. All right, so this next one uh, is actually kind of just an oopsie that I did. But instead of returning it, I decided to give it to Maddie. Um, I bought a blush, and I have an orange allergy. And I did not realize until I got home that this uh, multi-stick by Ilya has orange peel wax in it so i cannot put it on my face so this is going to maddie now there i you can go. i have no allergies high-end blush there you go thank um, you and i also selfishly got you this <laughs> creighton blue jay jacket wow <laughs> that's gonna keep me so warm there you go. represent wait you can wear this now because you're so cold i'm no it's for you i know but it's cold right now I love how selfless you are. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Represent. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, if you are still watching, if you're familiar with our podcast, we now will move into the spoiler section of this review. So, um, if you haven't read the book yet, if you're planning on reading the book after hearing our review the first time of the spoiler-free parts of the book, um, click off and then come back whenever you have actually read it. Mm-hmm. But we're going to get into the spoilers, and there is a couple of things about this book that I want to talk about because... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we're going to go in order because that is what we decided to do well. the last few times. So. Go ahead. Oh, you have no tabs. I so. don't. I was trying to blow through this bad boy. Yeah. Okay. So my first tab is on page eight, and it is oh, when starting early. Yeah, this is when <laughs> this is when they meet. Okay, and he said, uh, "Hold on." Oh, he has a scar, and so I wrote "hot" and a cute meet cute <laughs> because they meet by him. Like they like literally run into each other, and then she's like, "Oh, you're the dean that's getting married." And prior to this, she listened to his soon-to-be wife in a stairwell confess her love to her childhood best friend. And she yeah. was like, what do I do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Very good meet-cute. And scars good. are sexy. Yeah. You heard it here first. Okay. 
this is when I still got my, I, so the way that I color coded these is I did pink because it matched the book and I did a bright pink for a red flag. So, oh, okay, lots of those. So, my, I'm, my I'm guessing my first red flag is on page 15, and it's when Dean is talking about how he is, you know, he's only been with Ella for six months. And I wrote, Six months? Oh no, Dean, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, 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 no. That's a red flag. Don't, no, that's such a short amount of time. Yeah, well, and it's not like they're like, love struck either right this yeah. is like the whole premise is that it's a marriage of convenience he wants to get married to ella because she fits his lifestyle mm -hmm. and they are both very ambitious so he thinks that their careers will align well that they'll be compatible but not because there's any passion yeah at all which i don't understand that even line of thinking because like ev like no. even if it was like for convenience wouldn't you still want to be around somebody that like you enjoyed being around yeah and he didn't enjoy being around her. He was like, she'll let me not come home for dinner and I'll be fine. Yeah, like, he's like, we work on projects in our separate areas of the apartment and yeah. we never talk or anything. He's but like, she loves firm dinners. I was like, wow. He knows so much about Such her. Such a sterile relationship. Yeah. Like, ugh. Yeah. Um, and then it made me laugh because on page 37, it's Solange and she's talking about how... Um, she's like, Rem remembering the premise of my latest romance novel on my nightstand, I can't, I can't help wondering whether this could be the start of my own love story. Friends to lovers with a side of fake dating? Nah. <laughs> 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 That's not foreshadowing. No, not at all. <laughs> um, and then on page 49, they decide to fake date. And the reason why they decide to fake date is because Dean has this is so weird to me. First of all, why does his law firm care so much about his relationship status? Is that something that happens? Mm, I don't know. I don't work at a big firm, so I don't... Like, I could see where they like the image of, like, a family man at a larger firm, especially in, like, D.C., if they're handling big clients, because from, like, a, a certain perspective, you want to be able to connect with, like more wealthy clients a lot of times they value like people who have family values and stuff mm -hmm. like that but general i mean like in the omaha legal community it's not a big deal yeah i have a hard time thinking that like that would be an issue yeah like what well, i don't understand so basically he has this guy at work his name's henderson he's like an old crotchety man yeah and he's like a a partner right mm -hmm. and he assigns dean well he's assigns dean's nemesis at work peter and his wife to take out potential a potential new partner right mm -hmm. or associate associate yeah. and to take her out and to try and convince her to join their firm opposed to joining another firm that they're also looking at and peter is like this like the worst person ever. Like he, okay, he, you know who I immediately thought of? Who, who I would cast him as? Who? Pete from Mad Men. That's what I thought too. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I would, thought it was maybe just like the name no! thing. But yeah, like the first seasons of him, like like the first three seasons of yeah, exact Pete Campbell, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, I'm gonna fix your hair real quick. Thank you. I realized that we didn't talk about who we're gonna cast. Oh 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 yeah for Solange. When you said that, I immediately thought of um, Gina Rodriguez, the girl who played Jane from Jane the Virgin. Oh, okay. I I think it's just because I've been watching Narcos a lot, but both of my fan casts for the main love interest in this book are from <laughs> Narcos. If you say Pedro Pascal. It's not Pedro Pascal. Be, okay, I was going to be... Dean is, like, white and blonde. That's why, that's why I was confused. I'm like, you better not. <laughs> no. Okay, so... Uh, Paulina Gitan, I don't know how to say her last name. She plays Tata, which is um, Pablo Escobar's wife in Narcos. Okay. Um, and she's Colombian, so she's not Brazilian. But um, I, I literally think it's just because I've been watching that show this week. And then in my head, uh, Boyd Hallbrook, who plays Steve Murphy, he is the blonde American uh, mm. DEA agent. I literally think that show has, like, just skewed my perception of this book, but For that's Dean, who I would cast. The problem is with Dean, and I know that you started watching it, I can't not think about Dean from Gilmore Girls. 
Okay. So, like, that's who I was imagining. Because he's, like, he's a grown-up now. He's, like, a grown man now. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I could also see people arguing. I saw somebody argue that the actor who played Logan Hunsberger in Gilmore Girls. I don't know if you've gotten that far yet. Well, didn't you say that's who you would cast as Knox? No. No. Was that? For Knox, I said I was going to cast Mark from Coral Island. <laughs> I think you said you would cast... Charlie Hunnam, maybe, if there's, like, a real-life one. I'm trying to remember. I think he brought casting him up for a different book. Sidetrack. For Dean from... No, 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 not Dean. I brought up up Gilmore Girls because of um, Knox being similar to Luke. Luke, that's what it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, not casting him as Luke, but he's similar in personality to Luke because... Off topic, but he treats Wele like Luke treats Rory. Okay, I can see that. So from the two episodes that I've seen. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, um, I saw somebody cast. I saw somebody <laughs> cast Logan Hunsberger as Dean, and I, okay. I, I don't like. I think Logan Hunsberger looks like my brother, so I don't. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just call it a draw for this this personal casting, all right? But yeah, I mean, I think that the, I think I was picturing them a little bit younger than you were. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. They so they're ta- I think Solange, Solange is like twenty eight. Uh, Dean has been an associate for eight years, and for reference, I took one gap year, and I'm going to graduate from law school when I'm twenty six. So, add eight years on to that, that's mid-30s. I, yeah, I mean, it said that. He also could have been, like, super smart and, like... I mean, he was very dedicated. But yeah. even so, he only would have graduated at, like, 24, 25. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, but... <laughs> on to the next <laughs> on thing. On to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my next tab is on page... Okay. 76, top of 76, that first few lines. Whoa, whoa, I'm a fan of swallowing, so no. Plenty of people seem to enjoy when I yuck their yum, actually. Are we talking about the same thing? Probably not, she says. <laughs> okay. When I yuck their yum? Awful. Gross. Disgusting. Horrifying. Don't ever say that in real life. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, then I wrote... Oh, Okay. Then page 99, at the very bottom, this is the part when they're, like, having dinner together. And she, this is right before they go. And she says, he's a sweet man, and my being his, he's a sweet man, and my being his plus one isn't a bother. Truth is, I want to help him get his happily ever after, even if the after simply means he secures the promotion of his dreams. The next page. Dean should be paying me for this bullshit. Seriously. <laughs> Quite the change. Yeah. I Quite the la- change in tone. I laughed so hard. There was a couple of times that they did that in here. There was also one from Dean's perspective as well, where it's like, oh, I'm going to help him. I'm going to be so nice. And like, this is going to be fine. I can get through this. There's nothing wrong with it. And then the next scene is like, oh my God, I hate this so much. It's always Peter who does it. Peter is... Peter's the worst. She's horrible. He's a terrible person. Terrible. We'll get to why he's the worst, yeah. too. Um... Okay, so then on the same page, she also said that Molly looked like Anne, uh, Anne Hathaway from The Devil Wears Prada. Ooh. And so that's who I, I guess I was picturing Anne Hathaway as his wife from that point on. So Peter Campbell and Anne, Anne Hathaway. Hathaway. I guess Trudy kind of gives like Anne Hathaway vibes in Mad Men. A little bit. But All right. terrible man. Um, and then on page, yeah. Okay, there's, on page 110, there's another innuendo, where it's like, they're not talking about the same thing, but then they're talking about, it's the top, the, like, the line. This is when they go axe throwing, because Solange is not like the other wives of, uh, or girlfriends of law people. She is fun. She likes to have a little fun and do a little stuff. So, her, her idea was to take the prospective associate and her supposed supposed wife um, to dinner, and then to like do things with them to show them DC. 
which my head, but, and they're, they're like, we don't really want to go to the museums. And I'm like, okay, then what is the point of going to D.C. if you don't want to go yeah. to the museum? We don't want the tourist experience. Yeah, we just want, like, to do fun things. So they do the max throwing. Here's the line, though. Okay. I'm telling you, Dean, you're going to love it. The first time I experienced the dre- adrenaline rush of gripping the shaft of the axe, I was hooked. <laughs> Sorry, that of the axe was of the, in parentheses. Yeah, of That's the my axe. contribution. She was not that forward. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> bold. <clears throat> so that was fine. Um, and then, okay, then on page 121, Pete, Peter, Pete Campbell comes up to Dean, and he tells Dean that one of his f- ex-girlfriends is throwing a party in D.C., and that they should take Kimberly, who's the associate that they're trying to uh, recruit, and her wife to this party, and it'll be really fun, but that he is the one who should propose that everybody goes to it, because if his wife, if Peter's wife finds out that he's the one who suggested it, she's going to be really mad, because she doesn't like that it's his ex-girlfriend's engagement party, or whatever. Which, like, Red, red flags flag all day. I, all red day. flag. I put red a red flag. flag all day. I said, "Why would you do this? You know he's an asshole." Yeah, you know he's done. You know it's. You know what he's he, he's trying what to he's sabotage. Capable of. You know he's trying to sabotage your career. Like, why would you do that? So anyway, Dumb. he's scavenging. Scour- scavenging. Scav- scav- Scouring. Scavenging. Scavenging. That's not a word. Scavenger. Are you scavengering? <laughs> You're combining scouring and scavengering into one word. Okay. It's not my fault. Okay. I don't. English is not my first language. Okay. This is just. <laughs> my first language is. Is what? <laughs> Dothraki. <laughs> I don't know. Is that so funny? Because that's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could speak Dothraki. <laughs> what if I just was sitting here and I just started going, oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> um, we gotta go fast. Gotta prioritize. Now. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so let's skip to the party, honestly. Yeah, all right. So the party happens, and um, unfortunately, the, the prospective associate. Um, they cancel, they can't go. And also, so does Peter and his wife. Yeah, he's like, my wife found out, and now she's mad. So Ooh, I can't go. We can't Sorry. go. So, and then Dean's he, like, And then well, he doesn't know, he doesn't know that um, Kimberly and Nia have canceled. No. And it's so, a setup. It's a setup. Obviously. But yet, for some reason, him and, Dean and Solange are still like, well, let's still go anyway. Yeah. Let's still go. Let's still go. So they go to this party, and they walk in, and then immediately a guy is like, give me your phones, you gotta turn off the cameras. And they're like, uh, where are we? Okay. They're like, it's because there's VIPs. There's yeah, VIPs. there's VIPs Can't here. take pictures. Yeah. So they get inside, and everything's, like, normal. There's, like, people having hors d'oeuvres and stuff. And then somebody rings a bell. Ding. And people start getting naked. All yeah, of them, actually. All of them. And then they, they go into the bathroom, like, there's a little, well, Solange is in the bathroom, and Dean is out there by himself, and people start undressing, and he's like, oh, shoot. So he runs to the bathroom, he runs in there with her, and he's like, listen, this is not the kind of party I thought it was. And do you and know then what she says? Much to everyone's surprise. She goes, this isn't, this is your first time? And he's At like, a party like this? He's like, yeah, is it not yours? And she goes, no. No. Big party. What? Like this, like she's literally a school teacher. In yeah, this book. I'm like, whoa, 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 she is wild. And then they're like, so you like to watch? You wanna, you wanna go out there? You wanna and go stick watch around? out there? She's like, sick. They're like, yeah, let's go Sickos. watch. So they go and they watch, and then eventually they leave. I don't remember what it is that, that but they leave. So it turns on the oh, lights. Oh, 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 yeah, and um, also her cousin starts going into labor one oh, of her right. cousin and sisters they, they were all raised together so they're basically yes. siblings so dean's like oh, i'll come we've already been to a sex party so yeah. like what's a birth? Well a birth and so- then her cousin makes him put on these like electrodes that simulate contractions in the back of the car because she wanted to do it to her husband her husband's stuck in traffic so dean's like laying in the car like <laughs> like feet up on the window on the door trying to like 
of these contractions. I was like, why would you ever agree to that as a man for a woman you don't know? Yeah, and then of course he has the audacity to be like, I had fun tonight, but I don't like you. (laughs) And he meets her whole family there because her whole family shows up and her mom's like, hmm. And then they Hmm. make out in the stairwell. Which is like a little full circle because of uh, where she found where his, she found his soon to be wife. Not so much his ex fiance at that time. Soon yeah, to be wife. professing her love to her high school sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Very full circle. I but when that scene happened, which is on chapter fifteen, I wrote, "What a twist!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, this it is was a quite lot. the twist." Um, and then oh, and then this is. Let's see. I drop my forehead to his chest. Suddenly, his fingers are in my hair, leisurely massaging my head. He lifts my chin so we're facing each other. May I kiss you? And I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking of the little fedora guy again. <laughs> my lady, may, may I, I? May I kiss you? Well, and I can't really hate on this too much because, like, the author clearly wants to harp on consent in this book, mm-hmm. like. They, especially because they're fake dating, they make sure that they have signals to, like, yes, I'm consenting to you kissing me and stuff like that. I can't shit on that too much, but it just felt so unnatural for him to be like, hey, may I kiss you? Uh, like, I yeah, I did not, I thought that just made me, I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> The delivery in my head was interesting. In my head, it was m'lady. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a baby, but the baby is born. And then they kind of, like, get together and, you know. They do the do. They do the do. Um, um, however, he says a word in here. It's not as bad as the word that is on our band on list. On our band list. But this word made me actually laugh. And the word is combust. Mm. I wrote combust, LMAO. Also, he growls, and I don't like that. <laughs> 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 combust. <laughs> I'm about to combust. <laughs> I'm about to combust out of my jeans. <laughs> oh, um, God. Okay, so then. <laughs> sort of break up, right? Because no longer are they needed. She also needs a fake dating partner because her cousin comes into town. and Oh, yeah. And they're she, already having sex, but then they fake having sex because they can hear her cousin having yeah. sex in the room next to them. So it's kind of like that scene from Easy A when, like, they're like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just like that. Um, starring Joe from You. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they're, so that happens. They break up. They don't break up. They're like, okay, we don't need each other anymore. And he says some mean things he doesn't mean. Yeah. To try and distance that. And then, you know, she, uh, she goes to his house for some reason to get some oh to get her birth control pills and his mom is his there. mom's there and his mom is like oh i don't want to be alone i'm so sad and alone in this house in this apartment way and she's like okay well i guess i can take you to my family's little restaurant little bodega little, kind of. yeah and she's like okay so she takes her down there and they're getting some food and guess who appears peter <laughs> The worst person ever. And you know what he does? He, he like, is talking to his mom, and it comes up that, like, they are fake... To Dean's mom. To Dean's mom. And it comes up that they were fake dating the entire time. And he, like, gets this sinister grin on his face, and the first thing he does is he goes and he tells everybody. Yeah. He's a real snake. Why does it matter? That's what made me and, so and mad. And Dean like, gets fired and, for yeah, that. And Dean gets They're fired like, we for need it. someone trustworthy. Yeah, and someone who actually like, has a family. He's not breaking confidentiality, yeah. giving out, like, clients information. And then what, what also made it worse is that Kimberly rejected the offer. And so because of that, they were like, oh, actually, mm. it's probably because Dean is a big, fat liar. And that was just, I, that was like a, it was bound to happen. Like, it was a toxic work environment. So kimberly shows up and she's like actually nia and i who are trying to woo to moving here we were fake dating she's and then so, she's like but i'm actually in love with her and i don't know how so, to tell her during that part where she's like talking about how she's actually in love with her i was like she started talking about how she's like she's her best friend and i was like oh that's so sweet she's like and i love her i was like oh okay oh. <laughs> I was like, I was going to tell Courtney that's how I feel about her, but now <laughs> it's weird. So she's like, we were actually fake dating too because I didn't want to like 
be alone. So and so, they create a solid, real friendship. Yeah. Kimberly and Dean. Um, and they both kind of are like, all right, we need to get our crap together and go get our girls. Uh, and then Kimberly introduces Dean to her dad, who is like. The whole reason they were trying to hire trying to hire Kimberly is because her dad's a big wig lawyer and they wanted to get business through him. Uh, so Dean ends up working for him, gets introduced to him through Kimberly anyway. So he kind of cheats the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one part I like about the epilogue, the end of the book, is that that firm that fired him comes back around to try and get business through Kimberly's father. Kimberly's father is like, hey, Dean, why don't you meet with them and tell them to go kick rocks? Yeah. And Dean's like, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. I really thought that that was really like good a, revenge. a good revenge, you know? Because, like, it could have been so much more, like, in your face. But now it's kind of more just, like, actually, we're going to be going a different yeah. direction. I think that part's a little more realistic. But, okay, the unrealistic part of the ending is that Solange goes to Las Vegas with her guy best friend who's bisexual and also not interested in her. And, and you know who you reminded Who was I thinking of? What the hell is he in? Have you ever seen The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yeah. I, I think pictured she... her black roommate. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of... Oh my god, what is this guy in? Describe it. He is like... He's... Oh! Oh! Um, in You, okay. season two with Love, her friend, the guy, who's like the... He's like... He's light skinned and oh, he's, yes, yes, he's he like is. bald. Well, and he's bald. got like a gap in his teeth. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. He, yeah that's yeah. I'm thinking about him. Yeah. That's who that's, I, like, same that's who I was thinking of. Vibes. Yeah. Um he's like an aspiring actor. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they go out to Vegas for his thirtieth birthday and at this point he's fed up with Solange and Dean's BS. He's like, Oh my god, they just need to get together. So he steals Solange's phone. She thinks she lost it because mm-hmm. they got drunk. And he posts on his Instagram that he and Solange are going to get married at a chapel in Las Vegas. Well, he doesn't say Solange. He says, we're getting, I'm yeah. getting married at a Las Vegas chapel. And um, Max, who is uh, Dean's best friend, who's also dating Solange's cousin, texts him and he's like, hey, I thought you should see this. So Dean books a flight out to Las Vegas. He's like, I got to stop this. And then Solange's mom and her aunts show up on the flight as well. And... Um, it, it turns out that Brandon, Solange's friend, just, he told her that he just wanted to watch a Vegas wedding to check it off his bucket list. And then he wanted to get a picture. So Dean shows up to the chapel and they're like in front of the, um, minister <laughs> and he's like, stop this wedding. And Brent, and Brent's like, what wedding? <laughs> he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. A little, sn- little sneaky That's, that's where I found it to be a little unrealistic is like, it's just very cliche in the... Don't, but I mean, it's like a full circle moment, you know, but it's the whole getting on a plane, flying across the country for the girl you love. Anyways, after that, they confess their love and end up together. And uh, that oh, is... we skipped over the poem. There is a poem. He recites a poem. About little, it's referring to cats. But like it's, literal, it's literal called cats. Little Pussy. So the innuendo there is just, I mean, astronomical, but. Yeah. And I wish I could un. Yeah rip it out of my eyes (laughs) anyways so that was the wedding crasher yes by mia sosa so we have to make this exit really quickly yeah we gotta go get dressed we're skedaddling to go to a wedding wedding attire believe it or not um so next week we are going to be reading secretly yours by tessa bailey which (laughs) courtney is very excited about um it is a new release so the turnaround time for that one is going to be really Pretty really quick. really quick yeah. um but you'll probably get your first review on that book from us so yeah yeah so yeah hopefully it's good cool. um so that's what we're doing next week and we won't be together unfortunately no. but, but we will be back together again in march and like so three episodes from this episode we'll be back together hmm. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Thank you we so much will for see you next time. Happy reading.